Ladies and gents, we are back to our regular schedule of setup wars, which is on every other Monday. Welcome to episode 333. We're still going strong with season seven. So grab your snacks, sit back and relax and let the setup wars begin. What if you guys have access to a physical VPN device and not have to pay a monthly subscription for it? Well, that's what this is. The Deeper Connect Air. It's a decentralized VPN and it's the world's smallest and thinnest network security and privacy protection device in the world. Not only can you access any website without worrying about censorship or data leaks, but you can access geo-restricting content as well. For example, if you want to watch content that isn't available in your country, you can unlock that content by tunneling into another country. You can also use this feature and save a lot of money on your flights and hotels by booking from another country. But the best feature of the Deeper Connect Air hands down is the built-in ad blocker, which blocks various types of ads from your favorite websites and streaming services like Hulu. This means you don't have to pay a premium price just to skip the ads. All you have to do is buy the basic plan and it will automatically skip all the ad breaks while using the Deeper Connect Air. So if you guys don't have a VPN or you're paying monthly for a VPN service, I highly recommend to cancel that and pick up this instead. Not only are you going to be saving a lot of money in the long run, but you also get better protection, faster speeds, and access to more content. I'll drop a link to it down below. Transporting you straight into the cyberpunk nightlife, we have Alex's synthwave-inspired gaming room. He's a carpenter from Sweden who likes to game on his spare time, so he spent about 100 hours building himself a small little escape from reality inside his bedroom. This is where he does it all, from work to studying, watching YouTube, and of course, gaming. He does all this on the setup on the right because the left one belongs to someone else, possibly a sibling or a spouse. Unfortunately, I didn't get any additional info other than this picture. So both setups are using oak butcher blocks and a few Alex units as a foundation. And above that, we got dual 27 inch 144 Hertz monitors. At first glance, you might think that Alex is a diehard ROG Strix fanatic, but his peripherals say otherwise. For some reason, he decided to opt for a Razer keyboard, mouse, and headset. I'm not hating, by the way. I just think it would've been really cool for you to fully commit to the ROG gear. Plus this way, it would've been a lot easier for you to control the lighting since everything would've been on the same software. It does look like he does a bit of streaming as well, considering he's got a mic and webcam combo with some lights. However, I would slightly change the location of one of them. Having two key lights smacking you directly in the face is a bit overkill and will most likely overexpose and drown out the details in your face. One key light in front of you is more than enough. You should position the second one at a 45 degree angle for a fill light. So somewhere behind your PC would be the most ideal. You always wanna follow the three point lighting system if you're on camera and you want the best possible lighting setup. So you got your main key light and then you got your fill light on the side to fill in all the dark spots and give you even coverage across your face. And then for the backlight, it can be anything from a simple desk lamp to LED lights. This will separate objects from the background and give your video depth, which looks really good on camera. Now, obviously this is the most ideal lighting setup, but it's not required to have a three point lighting system. All you really need is just two lights. What's more important here is having the key light and the fill light in the correct location. What Alex did really well, however, is the cable management. He installed a net underneath to keep the power strip and used a bunch of ties to group up the rest of the cables in the back. Personally, I would have used Velcro straps instead of zip ties just for more convenience. But what's more interesting here is that he used a few L brackets to provide support for the rear table instead of going with Ikea legs. And my guess is that he wanted a cleaner look. And honestly, I think he achieved that. Having just two legs looks way better than four. Finally, powering the entire setup is an absolute unit, packing the Ryzen 9 5950X, 64 gigs of RAM, and the ROG Strix RTX 3090 with superb cable management in the back. It would have been cool to get some more details on the second setup as well, but this was still a dope submission. Thank you, Alex, for starting off the show. Shifting gears a bit, we are greeted by a true battle station by design. 
If you ever wondered what a gamer setup is like that also works in HR management, well, here's a nice glimpse into the person's space that fires you after you do something inappropriate at work. So the modern layout is a bit wonky, which is to be expected since he didn't mount them, but given the desk space, I think it looks fine. Andres does work from home and does swap between work and gaming quite a bit, so he's got gear for both occasions. The Logitech MX keys paired with the MX Master 3S for productivity and the Razer Black Widow V3 Mini and the Viper Ultimate for gaming. Holy macros, Batman. This is someone that actually takes advantage of all the buttons from the Elgato Stream Deck. I love to see it. For the most part, the desk is nicely organized. Nothing is really overlapping each other, but I would at least store the smaller items that aren't being used, like the AirPods and your wallet. Dare I even say, a pencil drawer will help you out with that. You can even take it a step further and store your laptop as well if you're not really using it at your setup. You can either keep it underneath the desk or to the side of the desk using either of these mounts, which I'll link below if anyone's interested. For audio, he's using the DT990s paired with the Blue Yeti caster for the main setup, but he does have a soundbar for the console setup. And boy, does this guy have a fully decked out collection of consoles. We're talking all the classics from the original NES to the GameCube and all the previous generation Xbox and PlayStations up to the current gen consoles that get their own dedicated pedestal. But of course, we can't forget about the handhelds either. He truly has the best of all worlds here. Any console he dreams of playing on and a badass gaming PC as well. That's equipped with a 12900K and the NVIDIA RTX 4080 Founders Edition. I admire the fact that Andre has built himself an ultimate gamer's paradise in seven years of time. Well done and thank you for coming on the show. Taking a break from the RGB goodness, we have a more simple and minimalistic setup by Anthony, who is in the retail business from Arizona. It took him actually three years to get the setup to this point for just gaming and music. Already, I'm in love with the color of the wall. It's very inviting and complements the wood countertop while offering a nice contrast with the Alex units and black gear. Anthony does everything on the 27 inch Alienware monitor that he mounted to the desk and below that, we got the Corsair K65 Mini with a Logitech G Pro Super Light mouse. You know, when music is included as the purpose of the setup, you already know he's not cheaping out. So not only did he put both speakers on stands with foam pads, but he's got two sets of premium cans and a shit stack to drive it all. Very nice selection of audio gear. At this point, I'm not even surprised with the cable management. Most audio heads are clean and organized, and it's certainly true in Anthony's case. Powering the setup is an equally badass system featuring the 10900K and the ASUS RTX 3080 with custom cables from CableMod. Simple and clean, straight to the point. I love setups like these where they aren't trying so hard to impress and only stick with the essentials they need while including a bit of decor as well for some personality. Exceptional setup, Anthony. Thank you for sharing this with us. Apart from the cozy and simple setups, we also run into a few unique and sometimes over the top setups. Well, Mike's setup is a prime example of this. He's a computer science major from Greece who spent the last 13 months building this one-of-a-kind setup for gaming, watching anime, and movies. Let's start with the desk mod, which I'm sure we can all agree is the focal point of this entire setup. So it's made out of two pieces of wood that is sandwiched by an acrylic piece in the front to help diffuse the RGB lighting inside. Speaking of which, to gain access inside, he created a separate compartment in the back which opens up by pressing on it. The door sits on a hinge so it can swing open, allowing him easy access to all the cables and the power strips inside the desk. There are two fairly thick steel legs holding the desk up, but he did hook up two triangle brackets in the back for additional support, but he made sure to leave extra space against the wall to pass through the cables. The primary display is the G9 Odyssey with a 65 inch OLED TV up top as an overhead, but judging by the location of the taskbar, the OLED TV might actually be his primary display, but I could be wrong here. Now for peripherals, he is rocking a Moto Speed K87S paired with a Rocat Cone mouse with clean cable work through a grommet he made in the center of the desk. And finally, the PC powering the entire setup is nicely tucked away in the corner on top of a wall shelf, and it's packing the 10900 with the Palette RTX 3090 Ti and some Lee and Lee streamers for a bit of bling. Which, by the way, I see you matching the crystals from the GPU with the Trident Royales. Very nice. There were some other last minute upgrades to the setup, like adding canvas panels on both sides. That way the walls don't look so empty and a five piece mural of one piece. I guess it's technically five piece now, right? I'll just delete myself. 
We've seen sandwiched RGB desks before on the show, so this isn't entirely new, but I gotta say, I do love the design language of this one the most. The edge is much wider, and there's easy access inside for the cable management. Phenomenal work with everything, Mike, and thank you for sharing this with us. Wrapping up the episode, ladies and gents, is hands down the ultimate gamer's paradise for all millennials. Tyler calls this the LAN cave, and the main purpose of this room is to host his monthly LAN parties, usually between 8 to 10 people. Okay, sorry, real quickly, is this dude related to Tom Cruise by any chance? Can anyone else see the resemblance? Anyways, this is also where Tyler works from home, so it's safe to assume he spends most of his days in here, and honestly, who wouldn't? This entire place is like a time capsule that grabs you by your groin and smacks you in the back of your head constantly. I mean, most of this stuff dates back to the early production units of Apple computers. In fact, Tyler's dad used to work for Apple back in the day, and because of that, they were able to network computers way before most people had internet or even had a PC in their house. It's also the reason why he has this giant LED Apple logo mounted against the wall. There are a total of nine setups in this room, including the two that are tucked away in the retro closet, as he likes to call it. We got a few vintage Macintosh systems sitting on a U-shaped desk and a bunch of collection of posters, boxes, floppy disks, and CDs from his favorite games. I absolutely love the wall of CDs that he created that expands from the retro closet into the open space. These are basically a physical copy of game discs that he has played in the past. Now, I'm not sure if it's just games he played or if these are all of his favorite titles. Zooming in on just a few of these already brings back so many amazing memories of my childhood, like Final Fantasy XII, Metal Gear Solid 4, you can't forget about the original Call of Duties, of course, and then Baldur's Gate 2, which also happens to be Tyler's favorite game. You can't call yourself an RPG fanatic without having played Baldur's Gate, right? Like, it's universally known that is the best RPG game in the universe, kind of like how we all know that Fortnite is the worst game in the world. It's common knowledge. My dude even has the original Diablo and Diablo 2 on here, right next to the original Warcraft and Warcraft 2. My respect for you has dramatically increased. I remember playing Warcraft 2 secretly on my Mac in ninth grade computer class. Oh man, those are the days. Anyways, there are many more CDs scattered across the wall, circling around the entire room. But let's get back into the setup real quick. Every single one of these setups are equipped with a 1660 Ti, and they are all hardwired to the internet. That way they can just turn on the PC and connect to the network easily. However, Tyler's setup is the exception, of course, since he is the creator and owner of this entire room. He's the one rocking a 34-inch ultra-wide monitor on top of a sit-and-stand desk with some Razer peripherals. Is it really a LAN party without the booze, though? While all the guest PCs are equipped with a GTX 1660 Ti, which I think is enough to run the games that they're playing, Tyler is actually packing some beefier specs with an i7 8086K and an ASUS RTX 2080 Ti. Aside from the nine PC setups, he also has a dedicated console gaming setup towards the back wall, which has a few options to choose from, like emulators from both the PlayStation and the original Nintendo, and the more updated Switch for some good old Super Smash. But what I'm most impressed with is the dedication to the cable management. One setup is a challenge in itself, but managing the cables on eight other setups is remarkable. There's honestly a ton of other really cool hidden gems in this room. If I covered everything, this would be an hour long video. So I encourage you guys to check out his full room tour on YouTube, which I'll link down below. Oh, by the way, did I tell you there's a motion detector at the entrance, which plays several different hand-picked retro game noises as you enter the room. Tyler, this submission was a nice treat. It's not often I come across a setup that hits you with so much nostalgia. In a way, this has brought back many memories by simply looking at these photos, and I have you to thank for that. I think it's really awesome that you were able to build this space for you and your friends to hang out each month. I think, in essence, these are what setups are really about. You know, to bring friends and families together, whether you are in the same room or not. I feel like it's a gateway to another world. A nice little escape from reality, and I'm happy that you were able to accomplish this. 
I'm also happy to award you the 59th seal of approval for this amazing time capsule that you have shared with all of us today. Make sure to hit me up on Discord to claim your plaque and your free Texaurus mouse pad if you choose. Well done. As always, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite from today's video. If you guys are enjoying season seven so far, maybe consider tossing a like before you head out as it does help out the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.